Well, my name is Danielle Denichaud, and I work as a holistic health and nutritional consultant. Uh, I'm originally from Toronto, but um, I'm a first generation Canadian. I'm the first person in my family that was born in North America. The rest of my family was born in South Africa. I'm, I'm half South African, half a, a quarter Italian and a quarter French. So I was raised with Mediterranean cuisine, African cuisine, African music, African art and North American society around me. I guide people into better understanding how their lifestyle and specifically nutritional choices are influencing their state of health, well-being or illness. I um, began my life sick. I started being sick when I was about four years old and for more than I guess 16 years of my life I had chronic illnesses. Um, I had over 15 food intolerances, I had endocrine, psychological and nervous system imbalances and I was also a professional dancer so I was, an, I was athletic and I had all these uh, imbalances. So I saw many many therapists and I ended up having to start making these connections between not just what I ate but also what I thought, how I felt, and my interactions with people. And I really did this discovery of understanding that holistic nutrition isn't just what we eat. We're affected by the metabolism of everything, our environment and our interactions with people and even ideas. What are the things that are under my control, out of my control, and how are these elements leading me more out of balance or more into balance? At a personal level, I ended up if I can say the word healing myself of all of my illnesses. I don't have any more chronic pain. I healed my digestion. I completely changed my whole metabolism. I smell things differently. I see things differently. I have no more food sensitivities. I can create my own happiness. I understand how, to be, how my mind can be healthy, how to take care of my mind, my heart, my body. And so that is very empowering for myself. I feel very honored to be able to share information in a way that is helping people to understand themselves better and to be healthier. So I actually have spent a lot of time in South Africa. I've also worked quite a bit in Europe. I've worked in the States. And that's actually something that has enriched my own practice. Because one of the methodologies I use in my own work, and I use about seven different methodologies, is looking at respecting ancestral habits. Looking at what have other cultures doing around the world and what has worked for them from generations and generations. And also what is commonly not working for them and how can I compare it to what's not working for us here. So a lot of people's cultural choices, especially gastronomical, what they're eating is based off of what they got at their grandmother's house and their great-grandmother's house and it's this source of comfort. And we don't live like our grandparents did. We live in a city, we've got different kind of stresses and that requires an update. We have to update our food choices the same way that we update our technology. Maybe not turn over every six months like we do with our iPhones and our computers, but we have to let our gastronomical culture, I mean we eat more than three times a day. Why, does, why wouldn't our food and our lifestyle choices reflect the intelligence that our technology also reflects? So that's what I see we need to do in Montreal, because if I compare it to other parts of the world, especially the West Coast, we're about 10 to 15 years behind in terms of how we're integrating a more evolved, advanced, healthy, conscious lifestyle into our mainstream existence. The one truth in nutrition is that there's no one diet that's good for everyone, and there's no one diet or approach that will be right for you for the rest of your life. So allowing me to evolve, because we will evolve, we will change, you know, where life is one beautiful expression of decay, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Enabling people to allow their choices to change is also a big part of my work. And I share that with individuals. It means that every person, even if they have the same kind of digestive problem, because of the series of evaluations I do, I know that it's a different expression of how their body's metabolizing stress. So it allows me to really work and learn differently with them. So I sort of can keep on doing more research with every individual because I may give one thing that worked for someone and they say, oh, that didn't really work. So I have to go back to the drawing board and check in with other professionals, a lot of other experts in the field. The future. Well, the near future, I'm going to continue um, developing my consulting services. I'd like to get more into conferences. I have a plan for a book of my own. That's something I'd like to release maybe in the next couple of years. Um, but I have my own ambitions. I'd really like to start working with kids, with adolescents. I want to start working with communities and their parents. So I would like to develop a curriculum for schools 
that will allow for the space of different cultures, but infusing it with the current knowledge that we know about how to take care of the body to reduce and slow down degeneration and support regeneration. Maybe I'll have my own center one day. I want to learn how to grow my own food, grow my own herbs, make my own tinctures, do my own evaluations so that I can really empower people to come and learn how to empower themselves. Is Montreal healthy? <laughs> As a city? I think that we're getting better. In the past, I've lived here for about 10 years on and off. 10 years ago, there was really only one option when you went to a store. And anything that was local, or that was organic was about four times more expensive than what was imported and was filled with pesticides. Now things are getting a little more interesting and there's a lot more choices for individuals to start really nourishing themselves from the land. I think we've got a long way to go, but I think we're starting to wake up and realize that if we keep on going in this way, we're not going to be really surviving. And a lot of the healthy people that want to do great ideas are going to plant their seeds elsewhere. And I think Montreal has great potential. We keep on, keep on planting those beautiful flowers and getting rid of those off those, those weeds, if we could say, that, are keep on, that keep on poisoning the land and poisoning us as a people. And if you can really start focusing on the things that are enriching us and re-supporting our vitality. As an individual, I'm always acting from my heart, always acting from my, my soul, my mind, and as my body. So we need to focus on, in Montreal, what do we need individually to, to be healthy and happy? And what does my environment need to be healthy and happy so it'll support me? And what do we need as a community, which may be different for different communities? And can we start to rely on ourselves and support ourselves in our vitality so we can start to move forward as individuals, but together with a common goal and common vision? Thank you.